أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الله كذا من لثاني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters welcome to our program as we know tonight is a very important night the twenty third of the holy month of Ramadan Laylatul Qadr the twenty third is a night with the highest possibility of being the night that the Quran was revealed. It's also the night that whatever good deeds we did on the previous nights, this is like the confirmation. Tonight is the confirmation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He seals it, you know, He seals the envelope and they send it off. So whatever we do tonight, whatever we do will make the thing for, will make basically be setting our goals for next year. For after the month of Ramadan. Whatever we do, such as if we try to be nice to others, if we try to read the Quran, we try to read our namaz, we try to read, you know, certain du'as, this thing will, it will translate into the next months. So, whatever opportunity we have on this blessed night to make the most of it, whatever opportunity we have, whether it's giving someone a glass of water, or it's giving someone a date, or it's, you know, picking up a piece of trash, whatever you can do, everything counts. Um, another very important thing is learning. Of course, you should be reading Quran, you should be, um, you know, reading different namazes. But another thing, a very important thing, is learning. Listening to a lecture, or trying to gain some knowledge. It was recommended on Thursday nights that some scholars said that if they had a big test, they would study on Thursday night, and the next day they'd be able to have that knowledge. It would be, it would be a higher chance of them gaining that knowledge. You'd be able to memorize it. So imagine a night like Laylatul Qadr, where it said that Laylatul Qadr is 1,000 times any other month. The night of power is better than 100,000 months. That's the exact one. So it's better than 100,000 months. The 19th to 21st, tonight the 23rd. These are the biggest nights of the year. But of course, we are confined to our houses. Normally, what happens is people are going to the masjid, of course, and you know, you're with a lot of people, and you read the du'as over there. But now, it's the same thing. Now, it's your responsibility. You have to do exactly what will benefit you. If we can do something big, something small, whatever we can do, it has an impact on us. And if we make niyats in this, if we make, you know, prayers, that we say, you know, we pray to Allah, we say, Ya Allah, right now I'm going to read, I'm going to try to read namaz shab every day. Or I'm going to try to read my namaz on time. Or I'm going to try to be more thankful. I'm going to try to be more grateful for what I have. And we will get the swab for this we will get the swab in other months as if we did it in this month because this is where we made the niyat. So whatever you can, that you can make, and you know, we need to realize what we can do. We need to realize that there are, right now there's eight days left of the holy month of Ramadan, um, about to be seven for um, New York. So with these last few days that we have, the last few days of the best month of the year, we should be looking at every opportunity. Reading one verse of Quran the equal to reading a whole Quran. On a normal day, you're reading one verse, guess what it counts as? One verse. You're reading one verse, it counts as one verse. But right now, you're getting a whole Quran for reading one verse of the Quran. Now, there's only seven days left of this holy month. We don't know if we're going to be here next year. We don't know if we're going to finish this Ramadan. So, whatever we can do is tonight, or even right now, look around you. See the little opportunities that you can do. See the little things. If you can read an extra verse of Quran, do it. If you can read an extra, you know, surah, if you're doing thusbi, do an extra thusbi. Um As we know, um, Imam Ali Lai Islam said about the, nail, lail, of, about the night of Layl al-Qadr, everything has a treasure. And the treasure of the poor is al-Qadr. Everything has a helper, and the helper 
of the weak is al qadr Everything has an ease, and the ease of those in difficulty is al qadr Everything has a chief, and the chief of knowledge is al qadr This night is the best of opportunities. It's the most blessed night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer all of your prayers in this month, except, um, except those who have angered their parents, those who have cut off relationships, those who have you know, cut off family, those who have um, you know, committed these sins. Um, but if you do do the night right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, if you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase your livelihood and to increase your, you know, increase your health, these are very important things. And if we're able to pray for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the best of nights, the biggest opportunity. Um, throughout the other days, we've been reading the dua for the, so far, 22 days of the holy month of Ramadan. So right now I'm going to read, be reading the dua for the 22nd day of the holy month of Ramadan. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم O oh Allah, on this day, please open before me the doors to your graces. Tonight is a huge night. So many people don't have this opportunity that we have. The people who have passed on, their books are now sealed. They, whatever they did in their lives, whatever they did, how many Laylatul Qadr's they had, you know, how many times they had this opportunity, now they can't do that. So the opportunity we have right now is a very special one. We have the night, the best night of the year. So we have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're able to do a lot on this night. That we're able to set up something for the future. Now there's two types of setting up for the future. There's the setting up of money financially. Um, you know, people say that you do work now. Try to work as much as you can and keep saving your money. So, you know, when you're older or, you know, whenever you want, you have, you know, a good amount of money. But the second type of saving is the saving for the next world. That's the saving that actually matters. Money in this world comes and goes. You could have billions of dollars and then you could lose it. You could be broke and you could become rich. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's so easy for him. that If you pray for wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you wealth. If you pray, you know... To, for poverty, which, I don't know, but you, you, know, you can pray for anything. So, if we do these things, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask Him that we are able to do the most out of tonight, that He opens His doors to us, and we're able to fully be accepted, and we make a huge difference, then the sky's the limit. If we only unlock that chance, we unlock that chance to have the tawfiq, to do a lot on this month. That when we read Quran, we're happy to read it. And of course, it's very recommended to stay up all night tonight. So stay up all night. Of course, from nighttime till the doors close of Layl Bagadr. They close at sunrise is when, you know, it's over. So up until that point, whatever you can do, do it. Biggest night of the year. There's different, many different um, du'as to read on this night. But one of the main ones, there's three surahs where it's highly recommended to read. Um, those are Surah An-Kabut, Surah Rum, and Surah Dukhan. Um, as we know, Surah An-Kabut is the spider. Um, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. The next is Surah Rum, which is the Romans. We see that the different, you know, how powerful they were and how you know, they lost it. Um, and Surah Dukhan, the smoke. These are the three main du'as that are recommended to read. Of course, there's um, the other du'a, um, Surah Inna Anzalna, um, Surah Qadr, um, is very important. So, if you can, it's recommended to read about 1,000 of those surahs, um, Surah Qadr, 1,000 times. Of course, it is. You know, you, have to, you can break it up. You don't have to read it all at once. You can break it up throughout the night. But you should try to get to that thousand mark. It's a huge thing. Uh, here's a thusby right here. I have this thusby. I thought it was pretty interesting. This is a, it's a five 
It has five, you know, this is a 500 B does be. It has a thing of five does be. So, you know, just two of these. So I thought that was pretty interesting that, you know, such a huge one. I only saw the other ones, but, um, you know, so that's a very important thing. Um, okay, so now we were mentioning about Sura Ankabut. Now, the thing about Sura Ankabut, as we know, it's the Sura of the spider. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the example of those uh, surah, this is surah al-Kabut, verse 41. The examples of those who take allies other than Allah is like that of the spider who takes a home. And indeed, the weakest of homes is the home of the spider, if they only knew. What is a spider? What is it the spider's home? The spider's home is his web. As we know, the spider crafts his own web. But the spider's web we see how flat fragile it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example that we are basically building, you know, our religion. We're building everything we have like the spider's web. And we see how fragile it is. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Kabut, He says, Do the people think they will be left to say, We believe and they will not be tried? Now, as we know that when people are in difficulty, you see that when people are in difficulty, that's when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they have a huge problem, when they have something that's going on, there's, you know, they're troubled, there's some horrible thing going on, that's when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, that's the example of, you know, it was one of the imams said that when people do that, when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they have, you know, huge trouble, it's like someone who has lost at sea. That only then, when they have no other option, they have nothing to turn to, then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a show called um, I Shouldn't Be Alive. It has, it's about, you know, these people and, you know, the situ these horrible situations, you know, the things that they went through. And it talks about how, you know, they survived. So one of the examples was you always see that when they had a, this huge problem that, you know, they were about to die and fall off a cliff and, you know, so much stuff like that, that's when they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when they prove this horrible hardship, then they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us, now some, um, there's the example of a story about a man who was hiking. He was hiking up a mountain. And, you know, he was, took him all day. When he got to the top of the mountain, he fell. He slipped and he fell down. And while he was falling, he was able to grab onto some branch, grab onto the rope. He was able to, you know, hold onto the rope. And he was about to fall. And he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and he told him, cut the rope. If you, you trust me, cut the rope. And the man held on to the rope even tighter. He was so scared. He didn't trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the morning, when people came, when they found him, he had frozen to death two feet above two feet above the ground. Now, this is the example of people not having trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do believe when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us something good, you know, we do then we're when our belief is the strongest, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something, you get something that you like, then you're happy. But otherwise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries you, he wants to see what you learned. And you have to implement that. That's when we break. That's when we crack under pressure. That's when you know, we stop. We think oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to help us. You, know, you, you read less namaz, you read less Quran. That's the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say that and you will be endorsed with easy ship and you know, easy street. And, you know, he doesn't say that. He say, talks about struggle. That in this world, human beings have to struggle. That everything you do, it's a test for you. Whether I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a choice of, there's a piece of trash on the floor in the masjid. 
and he gives you that choice that pick it up and clean the masjid. Little things like this are, you know, make a huge difference. So we have to try to train ourselves. In order to have that trust in Allah SWT, we have to try to train ourselves. Like we were talking about the saying, the house of the spider. Not only is the house of the spider fragile, when you think of it, of course, it is of course, very fragile. That was what the example was. Um, Allah SWT mentioned about that. But the other thing about the house of the spider is it's like a trap that So we see that with our own examples, that that's how this world is. This world is like a trap, that whenever we do something, the world is always trying to get us. al shaitan is always trying to get, go after us. Every single time, every single thing we see, shaitan is trying to come after us. Now, how can we stop this? How can we be protected from shaitan? Of course, in the month of Ramzan, shaitan isn't here. But it's not just about the month of Ramzan. Of course, the month of Ramzan, this is the opportunity where we can build something. There's 11 other months that we're now looking at. People, when the month of Ramzan comes, of course, before coronavirus, they go to the masjids and they go for all 30 days. They pray. Um, you know, some people wear hijab exclusively in this month. And they do all, all the things that they were supposed to be doing before. Then after the month of Ramzan comes, Eid is when they really start to wind down and go back to the way it was. So we see that in order to build trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to have the trust where it's not just when something's going good. It's not, and it's not just when something's going bad. Not the two extremes. Something's going great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you so much and you're so happy. And now when you're about to die and everything's horrible, you're screaming, you have to go in the middle. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you something good, you should be you know, happy. But when he tries you, you should also see it as a blessing. But this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a chance to prove what you've learned. Whatever you learned, whatever Allah, whatever you had learned, you had learned patience, you had learned whatever in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, now, I'm gonna, now show me what you know. Show me what you've learned. Now in order to build that trust, um, it starts from the bottom. We have to you know, learn to control our nafs. We have to learn to want to be there, want to, you know, be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People say that they want it, they say they want to do it, but they don't, they don't make the efforts, they don't do anything for that. Um, now, if we do this, if we're able to look at the night of Laylatul Qadr, and we're able to work on these things, we're able to work on the things that we don't normally do, and we say, Ya Allah, from now, I'm going to read all the nafilas. I'm going to read, or not all the nafilas. There's, but you can, you know, just read two of them. Just read three of them. Whatever you can do, whatever you can do here and there. Little things make a big difference. And pour down on me your blessings. Of course, we want the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I mentioned, it's a huge night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers all of your prayers except for those who have angered their parents, except for those who have cut off relationship, you know, some things of that nature. So if we want to have that blessings, we have to start off at the very top. You can start off by the very top. Um, yes. So. so if you want to do that, you have to start off at the very top. And where is that? Um, the very top is asking for forgiveness. Whether it's, you know, if you have any animosity in your heart, your prayers will not be accepted. If you have hatred towards another Muslim, your prayers will not be accepted. If you, you know, have something towards somebody else. If you say that that person, they took something from me or they, you know, little things that people get mad at. If somebody, if somebody cut you in line a long time ago, then maybe you'll still carry that. So whatever you can do, try to get rid of all of that. Try to eliminate all of that. Whether you can do something little 
or something big. If I have, for example, um, if I have something such as, you know, somebody took something from me, if I have even a shred of hatred in my heart, if you have even a shred of jealousy, it will not be accepted, damn it. Now, what can we do? We have to train ourselves, starting with uh, these small things. Um, how do I put on speaker? Uh, one second, I'm trying to get the sound to work. How do you turn it Is that it? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, you know, alhamdulillah, Rebel on me. This is a huge night tonight. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Uh, one second. I, I should have. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, brother, what are a few things that you would. Well, what are a few things that you would recommend to do tonight? What are a few things that, you know, you, you're going to be doing? So, tonight what, I would, uh, what, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to do uh, a sasfar uh, for a hundred times. And then I'm going to be doing Namaste Leil Sokaj. And I want to be uh, reading the... we should be doing is of course you should uh, brother of course you know you're right we got to start off the night right um, we have to start it off by asking for forgiveness because if we ask for that forgiveness that's the way we'll be able to unlock you know all the reward um, that's like the example I can think of is if for example somebody commits a crime um, or you know somebody does something you have to repent you have to go through you know, the difficulty, like if somebody commits some crime, um, you know, they go to prison, they pay for that. And then, you know, they come out better, hopefully they learn their lesson. So what, of course, that's so true that we have to start off by asking for forgiveness. That's the only way we'll be truly be able to unlock this night to its full extent. Um, so, uh, of course, so, you know, what are... You mentioned about forgiveness. You mentioned about that. What are some of the things that you would recommend? What are some of the things that you would recommend praying for tonight that we can, you know, translate into the rest of the year? I think since we're in this pandemic, we should like pray for everyone who has been affected and who has not been affected, and pray for them. Definitely, yeah. You know, of course, the pandemic, huge thing. You know, so many people have been affected by this. Um, brother, how, you know, how is this Ramzan, what is the main thing that you miss about going to the masjid? Of course, since we can't go during the coronavirus, what is the main thing you miss about it? I just uh, miss um, the people over there, talking to my friends, uh, and enjoying the lecture, which the Malama gives. Yeah, that, you know, I, I really miss that whole thing of, you know, being in the group, you know, praying with doing Jamaat with everyone, um, the night of Lil together, reading so many different du'as with everyone. But, you know, of course, since we're, we can't do that, but the night is still the same. It still has the same exact reward, still has, you know, 100,000 times the reward of any other month. Um, you know, I, another main thing that I'm going to be doing, or, you know, I recommend to be doing, is contemplation. You know, just, just thinking about your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a huge thing that I feel like a lot of people don't do. Just realizing, you know, constantly reminding yourself. Because as we know, human beings, they are made to forget. You don't remember, you know, much. One night you'll be inspired. The next night you'll be like, what did I, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. What was that again? And they won't realize. So if we, we have to constantly be reminding ourselves. Um, until you get to that point where you remember. You have to keep telling yourself, like if you memorize something, 
you keep you keep reading it over and over again. If you're memorizing a you know some surah, you keep reading, you keep reading, you keep reading it. Soon you start to remember. Soon, if you're somebody talks about the surah, you say, "What? I remember that," and you'll be able to read it fluently. So, yeah, those are the main things. Um, another thing, uh, brother, is I was mentioning um, there was three main surahs that you know we should try to read tonight, which were Surah An Kabut. Surah Rum and Surah Dukhan. Um, so, inshallah, if everyone out there is uh, able to read these du'as, that would be very important. These are huge du'as for this night. Um, yes, those surahs were very important. So, um, yes. Um, so, another thing that I thought was um, pretty interesting was that you know there's so many things online of course you know I saw the Amal like centers now of course it's the coronavirus everyone has to have things online um, people yeah. are having you know did you see that you know there's some like even they're streaming their whole you know they're streaming their lectures and they're streaming all the the was you should be reading online were you able to see any of them yes I, w I was able to yeah, what do you uh, what do you think of that, you know? What do you think of um what do you think of that environment? What do you think that, you know, do you feel similar? Do you feel the same reading in, you know, seeing it online compared to the masjid? Um, I don't feel the same, but like it very my feeling is very similar as being in a masjid. And like I get to uh, be with my family because sometimes it's too much crowd, crowding and stuff. But, yeah, it's really similar. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what I thought as well, you know, that, of course, while it is, we're all in a different area, you know, we can't be at the masjid with so many people, we're not able to do jamaat and break our fast in the same place. The month of Ramadan is still the month of Ramadan. It's still the best month of the year. So the little things that we can do, um, you know, by the examples of just helping somebody out and giving something to somebody. You know, if somebody needs to break their fast, you give them a little date. Little things like this are what make a huge difference. Um, and brother, I actually felt that, you know, in way, of course, the month of Ramadan is, you know, of course, there's many negatives about, you know, the coronavirus and everything. But I felt like this year, there's also many advantages like on a normal day, people, for example, who have to go to school, um, they make the excuse that I can't fast because of school. You know, you have a big test or you have something, they just, they don't want to do it. So they skip out, they skip it, which of course is the wrong thinking anyway. But now with the coronavirus, people don't have that excuse. Now they have a huge chance. They're doing their work from home. They're, you know, doing their school from home. Everything's from home. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us, even through we see this time of crisis, we see this time where people are dying and they're getting infected and so many things are happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still showing us some positives that we have an extra chance to do these many things. And, you know, this, it's a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting Ramzan. You know, and it's also... You know, what do you think that, you know, obviously it's a very memorable one. Um, the year 2020. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he really made it as kind of like a statement. 2020. It could have been, you know, 2000, like uh, 17 or 20, you know, 2021 or 3. And, you know, some number. But he made it 2020. The start of the new decade. That's when everything, you know, really started to... Um, happen. Uh, yeah, so um, like we were mentioning about Surah al qadr it's very recommended to read it a thousand times. So whatever you can do that is very important. Um, maybe if you, you know, could split it up. Um, so, brother, what do you think that, you know, do you think, how do you think we should divide our night? What are, 
how do you think we should divide our night? What are the, you know, like, for example, um, do you think that it's better to, you know, maybe read Quran at a certain time and, you know, like try to split your night up into many different parts? Yeah, because, like, the uh, Layla of Hush is, like, goes all uh, from breaking the fast till the morning. So I'd say, yeah, do uh, one night Quran and, like, one night namaz, and then, like, and sometimes you could, like, in the middle you can do namaz, and then after that you can do Quran. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's a great, you know, well, we, the main part is we should always be looking for what can we do. Like, what I did was, in the beginning I read, you know, stuff for La Rabbi Wa Tubule, a few tasbis, trying to, you know, if there's any sins I'd committed, which, of course, everyone has sins. We can't think that we don't have sins. That thinking is what makes us unable to repent. We think that, you know, I didn't do, I didn't really commit any sins, you know, we don't know. Um, the only people without sins are the prophets and imams. Those are the only people. So, if we can start off our night, um, the way I would personally, I think the way I'm going to be breaking it down is, I'll start off with, of course, doing khusl, reading your Mokrib um, then breaking your fast, of course. Then after that, like I was talking about repenting, trying to ask for forgiveness, trying to, you know, if you ever had something, you know, against somebody, you clear it. You know, if somebody took something from you like 10 years ago and you're angry, um, and you think that it's a crazy thing. Nobody's, people are. Um, brother, we see that with many different things that some people hold grudges. They, you know, they become upset at people for little things. And these things last for so long. So, you know, that should be, I think that that's, you know, a good first step. Because like I was mentioning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he will accept everyone's prayers. Except those who have, you know, angered their parents, cut people off. Those who contain animosities in their heart towards other people. They contain hatred in their heart towards other people. So the first thing, what I would suggest is what I would call cleaning the slate, having a clean, fresh start, um, you know, cleaning your plate, whatever you want to call it. If you have hatred towards somebody, get rid of that. Um, if you can even call somebody, um, family members, very important, um, your relationship, if you, you know, if you cut it off, if you try to distance yourself, that's when, horrible thing. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrecks, you know, your prayers won't be answered compared to before where, you know, if you try to have that strong connection with, you know, your family members, you don't cut people off, you try to, um, you know, do the most you can, you have to try to have a good, um, good, you know, relationship, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us. Uh, well, that's all the time we left for today. Uh, brother, thank you for joining us on today's program. Um, inshallah, you have, you know, a very great night of Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah, you're able to make the most of the time. Um, thank you, you too. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, you know, um, it's now coming upon, it's the time of Azan for New York. That's all the time we left for today. Thank you for everyone who participated in our program. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Khudafis. Are we off here?